Evening. Welcome to House Groups. You know, at church on Sunday morning, if you were there, we talked about our future and specifically our future building. Uh, as I'm sure many of you know, we've grown uh, exponentially. We've grown quickly as a church. And because of that, we know that in just a few years, we're going to run out of room at North Point Elementary. And our heart, our vision as a church is to be a people being changed by God to change the world. And that starts right here in our own city. And we know that we can do that, but we're going to need a greater capacity. We're going to need more space if we really want to keep doing that. Otherwise, uh, one, we're going to have to turn people away, literally, in two to three years, because we just need the space. And two, one of the other reasons that, that we want to do this is, you know, right now, six days a week, we don't exist to people in the community. You know, we kind of show, we pop up this church on Sunday morning, and then Monday through Saturday, we don't exist. I mean, unless you're going to the chiropractor at the Rain Tree Professional Center and having to see our office. Otherwise, you don't really even know that we're in the community. You know, a third reason I think this really matters is, you know, especially in the suburbs, I and mean, this is different in different areas of the country, but especially in the suburbs in the Midwest, a, a building matters. Like, I know that you know what church in a school looks like, but for the average non-believer, they have no idea what it looks like. They can't even picture it. I mean, they're thinking, like, is it, is it just in a classroom? Like, is it 10 of you in the cafeteria? Like, that, I mean, it's hard for them to even begin to wrap their mind around. And so a building, therefore, is a tool, and that word is important. A building is a tool to help us reach and disciple more people for Christ. A building is not the end game. It's really important that you understand this. This is, this is a heartbeat of our church here. Okay, uh, think of it this way. If we lived in a culture where meeting in a rented facility, like a school, was the most effective way to reach people for Christ, then we'd just keep meeting in school. I mean, now we'd have to find a school that seats more people, which I don't know of one in the area, we, we would do, but we would just do that, not build a building. This is not about getting to a building and saying that we've arrived. We're also not doing this for us. Like we're not doing this so we can relax and take it easy and not have to set everything up and then stay late and take it all down anymore. You know, plenty of church plants before us have used that line of reasoning. They said, let's get a building so that we can finally not have to do the hard work of renting a property any, anymore, having to literally set everything up every Sunday and take it down. We can finally have our own space and just relax. And guess what happens? In almost every scenario, when that's the philosophy, when that's the heart behind getting a building, churches get in their building, they relax, and they stop reaching people for Christ. And may that never be us. May we never lose, may we never forget this heart that we started with. It's just an intensity to work and work hard to reach people for Christ. You know, I mentioned on Sunday that our goal is to break ground in March of 2020. So that's, that's breaking ground in uh, 16 months. That's not far away. That's us being in the building, doing services in a little less than two years. And so when that happens... We will, on our very last Sunday at North Point Elementary, we will celebrate. You know, we'll move into the building. You know, we'll do some kind of practice services first to make sure we know what we're doing in there before we open up to the public. You know, we're going to celebrate that first day in. But after that, we're going to have some massive work to do to prepare for a grand opening, to prepare for an influx of people. And how do we reach them? And how do we share the gospel with them? And how do we disciple them? And then the work is on. See, the building is just a tool. It's not an end game. And so I mentioned on Sunday that our goal this fall is to raise an additional $125,000 in two-year pledges. And that gives us a much better shot at actually breaking ground in March of 2020. And we're really doing this for three reasons. Uh, one, uh, that's less debt that we're going to have to pay on the back end, right? That's less interest. It's more money we'll have for ministry. Two, uh, there are almost 100 of you that are new since we talked about this last year. And our goal is that we do this together. 
Like, I don't want you walking into that building in a little less than two years and feeling like you weren't even a part of this. Right? Let's all pick up an oar and do this together. If we're actually going to get there, this is going to take all of us who are a part of Renovation Church, not just the people who were here first. And then three, I, I, one of the things that we know is that neighborhood where we're moving, where we're putting up this awesome building, it's exploding with growth now. And so the window of opportunity is there now and we want to move while that amazing window is open. And so we're just asking people who've never pledged to harvest before to begin praying about making a two-year pledge. That's just a pledge of how much you want to give uh, above and beyond your regular giving over the next two years. If you've already pledged to harvest, um, and you don't need to pledge again. Now, if the Lord's calling you and putting it on your heart that, yeah, you, you, you can do more, or something's changed in your life, you want to do more, uh, yeah, go ahead, and do, do more. That's, that's, that's amazing. But for now, over the next week or two, I want you to just really begin to pray. Uh, if you're married, begin to talk it over with your spouse. We have a commitment Sunday where we'll kind of accept uh, pledges. That's just an intent of what you want to give over the next two years, and that's on November 18th. So just really engage with us from now until then. Be at church next Sunday. Uh, be at your house group next week. I'm going to be there uh, doing a, a, a Q&A. We want to have all of this sort of in front of you, and so you can be informed. There's nothing hidden in this. You can personally ask me any question that you that you want. And so just keep praying. Uh, we'll just keep asking God to move. And I just thank you. Thank you for your heart for this church. So many of you, hundreds of you have sacrificed so much already in the last year, some of you in the last four years to get us to this point. And I'm so grateful for that. Amen.